Um, so my name is Larissa Worley. I work with Travel 42. I'm the Senior Customer Support and Relationship Coordinator. Um, Travel 42 was created in 2011 from Star Service uh, Hotel Reviews plus the Weissman Destination Guides and those big red binders. So Travel 42 encompasses both of those products in one website. We have a brand new platform that I'm going to be walking through today and giving you guys some tips and tricks on how to use it best. So this is where you're going to start when you get to the website new.travel-42.com. If you don't have a user ID or password or you do not have a subscription, you can try it out for 14 days by clicking up here at the register now button. If you do have a login or you do have a subscription, you can click sign in over here to the right, simply input your user ID and password and then sign in. And this will bring us to the dashboard here in just one moment. Here we go. You'll know you're logged in because it's going to say welcome and then your name. And then you'll also see the dashboard, which is your home screen and where all of your trip plans and travelers live. So just to go over a brief description of what you're going to see on the dashboard. Of course, you have the dashboard up here in the upper left. If you ever need to get back to it, just simply click dashboard. News and alerts, that's where you will find um, any of our sister products, any updated destinations, any updated hotels travel alerts, travel age west blogs, travel weekly blogs, and travel pulse blogs. So this is some very good information for both you and for your traveler, especially if there's any alerts, um, which are powered by IntelliGuide, where they are going to be traveling or going to be going to. Um, restrictions and e-visa, these are post both powered by Sherpa. Restrictions will basically allow you to see what restrictions are in place when traveling from one destination to another, and then back home, e-visa, simply put, you can purchase e-visas here. So if you click e-visa, it's gonna open up a separate tab for you, and then you can research or purchase any e-visas if needed here. I'm gonna go back to the Travel 42 side. The help tab, this was what I mentioned earlier. The help tab is basically gonna be where any frequently asked questions, any getting started, any on-demand training is gonna live. If you click the help tab, it will again open up another tab, so you'll see now I have three. I have the e-visas tab, the help tab, and then Travel 42 where I just was. Um, but welcome to the help center. You have getting started, live webinars and on-demand training, frequently asked questions and tips and tricks, and then support and troubleshooting. If you're not really sure where to go, start by searching what you're looking for, and that'll pull up articles and videos that might help you navigate Travel 42 with ease. So let's get back to Travel 42. These I'm going to go over at the end, the profile, manage account, and sign out. So let's get back to the dashboard. I'm going to click dashboard. Um, you'll notice up here we have a banner. This is a banner that features our frequently uh, or recently updated destinations, hotels, and then our sister products such as Access Travel App. Um, Mobio, which is a brand new app that we have that allows you to stay connected while you're traveling. And also you can see some um, points of interest wherever you might be near. So definitely check out this banner up at the top. Um, it does change frequently. So if there's something that interests you, just click on it and it'll open up that platform for you. So you have a couple of ways to start on the dashboard. You'll notice down here, I have my trip plans. These are trip plans that I have created and have been working on. Trip plans will always be saved unless you delete them. And down towards the bottom, I have my travelers. You'll see two buttons on the right, create new traveler and create new trip. If you wanna start with one of these, create new traveler. If you're gonna send information to somebody, you do need to have their email address saved in Travel 42. That way you can send it directly to them. So if you wanted to add the traveler here, all you would do is simply click create new traveler input the first name, last name, and email address. Um, that's the only thing that's required, but you also have some additional information and preferences. I do recommend putting as much information as possible just because this is a way to keep up with this traveler. Um, so if you wanted to reach out to them, say when their birthdays are coming up or when their anniversaries are coming up, just let them know, hey, um, let's plan a trip for your anniversary. I know it's coming up in two weeks. Um, this is a great place to keep all that information, and then you can send them the information that they want based on the destination or hotel that they previously had, or even if they wanted to try somewhere new. 
So once you have the first name, last name, and email address, you would click save new client, and then they would then be saved as a traveler. You only have to do that once. Once you add the traveler, or, excuse me, or the client, they are always going to be saved unless you delete them. So you only have to save one traveler um, at a time. Find your trip plan if you needed to search for a trip plan that you've previously saved. There's a search bar up here at the top, um, or you could see them list view down at the bottom. You have some options you can do with trip plans as well. Say you were to click on one of the trip plans, let's say Bermuda. I wanted to resend this one. I would click on the little circle and then all of my action items will pop up. You'll also notice this little action item box when we're in the trip plan as well. So you'll be able to open the trip plan, edit details, view travelers, send the trip plan again, print or download, copy the URL of the trip plan, duplicate it or delete it. So you do have some options with the trip plans um, that you have already saved. So you can then click create new trip if you wanted to start by creating a new trip, um, or you can begin by searching. It's totally up to you how you want to go. So if you're just wanting to search for information and kind of do research on a destination, let's say, let's go ahead and start by doing that. So let's type in Jamaica. You'll notice there's a couple of different ways to pull up Jamaica. You have your destination guides up here. You have your hotels, cruises, see and do, and then you can also press enter to see all results. So if you know you wanted to go see Jamaica, go ahead and click on the destination guide and that'll pull up the Jamaica destination guide. You have two options up here at the top. You can send or print that destination guide in its entirety. So if you were to click send, the send modal is gonna pop up. You're going to type in your client's email address or name and then send it by clicking send email. You can also change the subject or you can add a body to the email if you wanted to write some information for them. This is a quick and easy way to send or print the information without having to create a trip plan. The only negative, at least in my opinion for this, is it's not saved. So it won't be saved under that trip plans on the dashboard that we were on. This is just literally a quick way to send or print information for somebody who may want to see the information. Um, let's see, let's see, let's see. You can also, let's go back to the dashboard and do Jamaica again, because I want you guys to see the search results. So when I typed in Jamaica, I went straight into the destination guide by clicking on it in the dropdown. If I wanted to see or filter the search results, all I have to do is click on this magnifying glass or the enter button on your keyboard and all of your search results pop up. So if I wanted to see more destination guides, I could then click on destination guides over here to the left and all the destination guides would populate. If I wanted to see see and do or points of interest, I would click on see and do and points of interest. Hotels, the same way. And you can also filter hotels through the search results. So you can filter by the star rating. If you wanted to only see five star properties, you could click five star. Um, if you wanted to only see hotels with a star review, you would check this box. So you could see only the hotels that have a star review. By amenity rating, you can search for the hotel by name. Um, or even by first letter. So if you know, if you don't know um, the name of the hotel, but you know that it starts with something, uh, so it starts with a certain letter, excuse me, you could do filter by first letter and that will allow you to search hotels that have that specific letter. You can filter by chain or hotel rep, hotel size, and then you have some preferences, locations, and types here as well. Now, the same thing with hotels as with destination guides. Um, you can always click send or print to send to quickly send or print that hotel in its entirety. So the same that we saw when we were in the destination guide, you'll see here on hotels as well. So you'll, excuse me, see the send and print buttons on the um, hotels, just like we did with the destinations. So if I clicked view details on this hotel, it's going to pull up all the details that we have on the hotel and that send and print buttons that we saw earlier. So you can send or print. Now, if you wanted to add this information to a trip plan, like say you didn't want to quickly send or you wanted to customize it, 
You can add items to a trip plan by simply checking a checkbox. So if I wanted to add the basic info, no photo gallery, the star review, and that's it, all I have to do is start by clicking the checkbox that I want and either adding it to a trip plan I've already worked on, which you'll see them all here, or creating a new trip plan. So if I click create new trip, the only thing you have to, have to do to create a trip plan is title it. So this could even be something as simple as Jamaica trip. And that's it. That's all I need to create the trip plan and add that information to the trip plan. So let's go to next step layout. I'm gonna go into this in more detail in just a moment when we go through creating a trip plan from the dashboard. So this is just mid research. I've decided I want to create a trip plan based on this hotel, but I don't want all the information. So I'm gonna go ahead and click create new trip. Basic info has been checked. Like I said, I don't want the photo gallery. I do wanna add that star review. I'm not gonna do the property. So, so far, all I've added to my trip plan is the basic info and the star review. Um, if you only wanted the star review, that's totally fine as well. You just have to uncheck the other item. So anything that has a check mark beside of it, that means it's been added and saved to your trip plan. So we can go back to the search Jamaica. If I wanted to add Jamaica destination guide, I can click add item here that will add everything within that Jamaica destination guide. So if I wanted to pick and choose the items, I do need to click view details, and then I do need to go through and check the items that I want to add to this trip plan. If you decide maybe days down the road, there's something that you added that you no longer want, or maybe you forgot to add something, you can always edit the details of that trip plan. But that was pretty quick. I mean, that wasn't a hard trip plan to create, now I can go back to my dashboard. There's my Jamaica trip that I worked on. I can send, print, download, copy URL, duplicate, which just means that it's going to duplicate that entire trip plan. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and click open just so we can take a look at it. So I have my one destination guide and my one hotel. Um, and then we'll get into the organize and preview here in just a moment. But I just wanted to show you that sending a trip plan or printing a trip plan is not hard. It's, it's pretty easy to do. All you need to do is title the trip plan with a name and then add items into that trip plan. And it's the easiest way to make sure that your trip plan is customized to the items that you want and your clients want. So whenever you're done with a trip plan, Go up to the upper right corner. This is where you're also going to see your action items. The same little circle we saw on the dashboard. You're going to click on that and click save and close. After you're done working on a trip plan, you need to make sure you click save and close. That way Travel42 knows that you no longer want to edit this trip plan. You're starting on something completely new. So we'll save and close. And then I want to show you a little bit more about the creating a trip plan. I went through how to quickly send, how to quickly print, how to quickly create a trip plan, but let's go through and create a new trip from scratch. You'll also notice one thing I want to bring up, all these trip plans can be reused. So if there's a destination or a hotel that you know you're sending very often and you already know exactly what you're going to add to it, I would go ahead and create a new trip and then just constantly reuse it. You can reuse it for different clients. Like this trip that I just created, the Jamaica trip, it does not have a client associated with it, but I can send it to any one of my travelers that I have saved. So if I came back in two weeks and I'm like, oh, I have a client who wants to do the same or I want to present the same Jamaica trip that I sent for somebody else. All I would need to do is click on the Jamaica trip click send or print, whichever option applies to you and your clients. Um, so that's trip plans. They don't have to be as in depth as possible. They can be very simple and you can simply reuse them over and over and over again. Um, but I wanna go into a little more in depth on what it means to create a trip plan and all the options you have to create a trip plan. So let's go ahead and click create new trip right here to the right. You'll notice there's two tabs. We have a trip details tab and then a layout tab. You can click between them as needed. Trip details encompasses the trip plan name, 
So let's go ahead and type in Rome in this one. We'll do a Rome trip plan. Now you can title it whatever you want to. Um, some people even put like the dates or maybe their client's last name. It, it's whatever is going to be easiest for you to notice the trip plan under the dashboard. Especially prepared for, say a group of people is going and you want to send it to a group as opposed to just one person. You simply just type in, let's say, Worley Family Vacation. And that is how this trip plan would be sent for, for the Worley Family Vacation, as opposed to me, Larissa Worley. Travelers, you can input your travelers here. If you've already added them in Travel 42, you simply just type in their name or email and then they will pop up. If this is a brand new client or brand new traveler and you need to add the traveler to Travel 42, you haven't done that yet, you would simply click the plus sign to the right of the travelers button. The same modal we saw earlier pops up where you input the first name, last name, and email address, and then save the client. Since my traveler is already added in there, I'm going to go ahead and add back in Larissa Worley as that traveler. Now, the suggested retail price, that you can input or edit as needed. It's basically what the cost of this information is to your clients. A lot of um, travel agents or travel advisors, what they do is they'll put the suggested retail price there and then just waive that for their clients. Like this is a lot of information that you're putting together for them. How much is that information worth? How much is your time worth to create that information for them? Which with all this uh, information that we have in Travel 42, when you send this or print this information for your clients, it looks like you did so much research to get all of this information. And that's what our goal is, is to give you this information and easily allow you to share it with your clients. Um, so departure and return, pretty simple. When they depart, when they return. Now, please remember, all of this information is optional. The only thing you need to create a trip plan is a trip plan name. You don't need to have all this, but this is options that you have um, that you can add to your trip plan. So departure, return, or the duration of the trip. So the number of days that they're gonna be on their trip. Comments, which are displayed to clients. Trip notes, which are not displayed to clients. So you have some options there. If you wanted to leave them any comments, put that in the comments box. If there's anything that is for your information only, be sure to put that in trip notes, which is not displayed. So the next step, of course, is layout, which we saw up here at the top. I'm going to click next step, layout. Um, enter the information below to create your trip plan. As I said earlier, only a trip plan name is required to get started. So these are some optional things you have as well. So the cover page comes with or has a photo and then your contact information or your business card, which can include your first name, last name, email address, um, headshot, logo, website. You can put as much information as possible in the business card, and we're going to find that towards the end up here in profile. So that's where you go to edit your business card. Um, business card is going to be included in that cover photo, and then also a trip summary. So you can have a trip summary, which I, I kind of look at as more of like a table of contents. So if you don't really want the table of contents, you don't want your business card, you don't want a cover page, you just want the information, simply uncheck all of the items. Now, when you click include business card, the cover page is checked because remember, the business card is on the cover page. So if I do not want the business card, then I can choose, okay, do I want a cover page or not? Now for the cover page, there is an image. You can upload your own cover photo or simply let Travel 42's photo come through on your trip plan. We pick the cover photo based on the information you add in your trip plan. So once you start adding things, that's when you'll see a photo pop up if you didn't already choose one. A lot of agents like to put a photo or link an image of places that they've been. So if you have a pretty photo that you took while you were in Rome or wherever this trip plan is, feel free to add it as your cover photo. I like to keep all of these checked for now, just because you can always edit them later. The two that, or excuse me, the one that I normally take out most often is the show images and PDF view. 
It's fine in online view because online view is the, if you send a trip plan via email, that's the online view. So images there are perfectly fine. They're gonna show up beautifully. It's when you send it in the PDF and try to print it. If you have a black and white printer or maybe just a printer that doesn't really do images very well, that's the only time I tell people just to think about if they wanna have images in the PDF. I have a black and white printer and I know that I would not want the images printed with my black and white printer because it's not gonna be very pretty. So that is an option that I tell people, if you're gonna be printing this trip plan, go ahead and remove the images unless you have a beautiful printer and you know you're gonna wanna print those images. As I said, here is the upload an image or link an image from your computer. Um, you can do that for any of the trip plans you create. So let's go ahead and create new trip plan. It's loading our workspace now. So what I like to tell people is we have just created the folder. We created our trip plan folder for Rome. Now we have to add information into that folder. We have to add what we want to send or print for our clients. So for Rome, let's go ahead and start by searching Rome. We have Rome, Italy, Rome, Georgia. Then we have some hotels, see and do. And you can also, I know I'm starting with destination guides um, or with destinations themselves, excuse me. If you know the name of the hotel you're specifically looking for, you can also type that in the search bar. You can search for destination guides, hotels, see and do, cruises, anything can be searched for in the search bar. My preference is I like to search for the destination and then filter down by the destination. So for this, I am looking for Rome, Italy. So I'm gonna click Rome, Italy right here. And then our destination guide pops up. This looks very similar to the one we saw earlier with Jamaica, except now we're gonna do some customization of this trip plan because I don't wanna send everything to my client. I wanna send exactly what I think they're gonna to wanna to know. You have a couple of ways to do that. First, checking the check boxes. If you go through and just start checking the items you want, anything that has a check is gonna be saved in your trip plan. So that's the first way you can add information to a trip plan. The second way is by applying a destination template. If you click apply destination template, this whole destination guide now populates in one modal. So here is all of the information included in the Rome destination guide. You have two options within the, this template modal. You can utilize the full destination guide. If I wanted to add all the items in the destination guide, I could by utilizing the full template. Everything is checked, save, I've added everything. If you want it to be more custom, we have a couple of other options, business, cruise, or leisure, based on the traveler type that is gonna be traveling to this destination. So every option is going to have different items checked. So for the leisure traveler, here are the items that are gonna be checked. You have your introduction, your highlights, geography, history, sightseeing, recreation, nightlife, performing arts, spectator sports, and shopping. You'll also notice these little arrows here to the right. If you click on those, it just shows you everything that's included in that say sightseeing category or performing arts category. Anytime you see an, an arrow or a triangle, it just means there's more information that you can look at. We're just trying to make it as condensed as possible so not all the information pops up at once. So let's say we have our leisure traveler. We're gonna go ahead and save this template. Perfect. So now everything has been added and you can also go back. So say I added that template, but I really want them to have the potpourri which the potpourri, in my opinion, is a wonderful category to read. Um, the Kingdom of Italy was proclaimed on the 17th of March in 1861, but was not finally unified until 1870. It's got some facts that are very helpful, especially for somebody who's never been to Rome or wherever you might be going. So I always like to add the potpourri in there. Um, and I'll kind of go through a little bit of this information as well. So the overview tab, you're going to have the photo gallery, introduction, highlights, geography, history, port information, more so for cruising travelers. 
potpourri, which is what we just went over, and then hotel overview. Now, two options to get to the next tab. You can go to see and do down here at the bottom or scroll back up to the top and click on see and do over here to the left. Either way, we'll get you to the tab. So let's go ahead and click see and do, excuse me. You'll notice under the see and do tab. Now this one's gonna be a pretty lengthy destination guide. Um, so we have the sightseeing information, historic sites. You'll also notice these gold ticket items. Those are items that we highly recommend. Um, keep going. Like I said, Rome is a very large destination guide. Then we have museums, neighborhoods and districts, parks and gardens, recreation, bicycling, boating and sailing, golf, hiking and walking, horseback riding, jogging, spas and health clubs. Let's go ahead and add that one in. Um, but there is quite a lot to pick and choose from. So you can go through and click on each individual item that you want. So if you only wanted, let's say, this item right here, you can check it, or you can check all of the items by clicking up here. See, now all of them are checked. But if I wanted to uncheck and only click one, just remember, anything that has a check beside of it is going to be saved and sent or printed for your clients in that trip plan. You've got nightlife, dance and nightclubs, live music, performing arts, film, music, opera, ticket brokers, venues, spectator sports. The list goes on and on with destination guides. These are very, very helpful to learn about a destination and also to help plan your trip for a destination. So next we're gonna go to the dining tab. You'll notice again, we have the gold ticket items. We have the dining overview, and I always like to add the local and regional, uh, but there are also different cuisines as well. So you got vegetarian, breakfast and brunch, coffee houses, desserts, seafood, steak options, and other options. And every destination guide is gonna be a little bit different, um, which is why I highly recommend just reviewing over everything. It helps us learn as well when we go through and um, see everything that a destination guide has to offer. Um, so the next tab is going to be the safety tab, etiquette for that destination, personal safety, health, and then the disabled advisory. I always like to add those. And see the, the um, template that I used didn't include those, but I can go through and now check items that I want. I don't have to go based on that template. That's just a good starting point if you don't even know where to begin. Now, this is probably my favorite tab out of any of the tabs within um, Travel 42 is the tips tab, do's and don'ts. This is a very, very helpful one for people that have never been to a location. Um, let's see, do pack a good insect repellent. Large tiger mosquitoes from Asia do not carry diseases, but they do plague the city in the summer months. That is very helpful for somebody like me who does get attacked by mosquitoes but also I've never been to Rome. So if I was traveling there and hadn't, I wouldn't think Rome had a lot of mosquitoes, but I obviously don't know. So the do's and don'ts, I always add that for everything. Um, do order pizza with ham and figs or potatoes and rosemary, popular traditional Roman snacks. Very helpful to know. Uh, don't expect to eat dinner in a local restaurant before 7.30 or 8 p.m. And lunch is rarely served before 12.30 or 1. That's just helpful for your clients to read, um, just so they kind of know how the locals act, how what to expect when they get there, uh, especially coming from another place that maybe you've never been uh, overseas before. Geostats is very important as well. Passport requirements, voltage requirements, telephone codes. Then you have your money, your currency exchange, tipping is a big one, um, always adding that one, weather, what to wear, communication, internet. Then if you're gonna be sending any mail or packaging services, newspaper and magazines, telephones, transportation, and then air, car, and public transportation. Um, so that's helpful if you're not really sure how you're gonna get around. Check out the tips tab for public transportation because you know if it's easier to take a train or if you should rent a car. That would be helpful for you to be able to tell your clients. Ship, taxi, train, and then we also have for more information tourist offices. So we've gotten everything added to this trip plan except for hotels. I haven't added any hotels, any hotels in yet, but I'm gonna go to the hotels tab next. 
So you'll see the hotels tab is right here. I'm gonna go ahead and click on it and that'll populate all the hotels. So we can filter the hotels as we did earlier in the search results by star rating. You can show only hotels with a review, amenity rating. I wanna go ahead and see the star rating and let's put in hotel preference for a pool. So let's see the first one that popped up. It's a five star for amenity rating. You have a couple of options here. So one thing I want to make known, right now we are working in a customized trip plan. So I am adding things that I want to be added to this trip plan. Remember the send and print buttons we looked at earlier? These will only send or print that hotel or that one destination guide. This does not take into account the customized trip plan that you have worked on. That's where we need to go back to the dashboard or back to our trip plan and use the action items. So just wanted to make that known, same for these buttons up here. You only wanna use these if you're gonna quickly send or print one destination guide or one hotel. Since we're working in a trip plan, I'm not gonna use those buttons. I'm gonna simply click view details. So now it's broken up the same as it was that we saw earlier. You have the overview, the star review, the property, the map. So you can choose to add the basic info, which has the hotel address, phone number, website, general manager, star rating. Um, last time it was renovated. Let's go ahead and add the photos in there. Now you'll see booking info towards the bottom. Those are never included in a traveler's report. So that doesn't even have a checkbox to be able to be checked. That's just for your information. Next, we're gonna go into the star review. This is the bread and butter of our hotel portion. We physically send people to these hotels to write exactly what they see when they visit them. So you'll see the location and the history, the property overview, accommodations, non-standard amenities, advisor notes, and comparable properties. So I definitely wanna add the star review in there. Next, we can go to our property. It includes room amenities, hotel facilities, restaurants on site. I don't need the meeting facilities, so I'm gonna skip that completely. I'm not gonna put a checkbox there. We're gonna do recreation, rates and policies, and location. And then you also have the option to do a map. I'm not gonna include that one in this trip plan. So let's see, I've got my Rome destination guide added with my customized selections. And then I've got my hotel added with my customized selections. So let's get back to the dashboard. I'm going to go ahead and click this X in the upper right corner. And please remember, when you get out of this, it is all saved. Click here to close this overlay, all selections saved automatically. So now we are back to our dashboard. Let me refresh my screen. Perfect. Okay, now we have our one destination guide and our one hotel. And then 96 C and do. So do you remember earlier when we got to this spot and it was all zeros? There was zero destination guides, zero hotels, zero C and do. That's because it was just a folder at that point. Now we've added information into that folder, which is why you see destination guides and hotels included. Now you'll notice down here at the bottom, there's a thing called custom places. If you click this to add a custom place, if something you want to add to this trip plan is not within Travel 42, this is where you would go to add it. So a lot of agents will use this to add airport information or plane information, or maybe if they're staying at an Airbnb or grandma's house, you would add that information here because it's not included in Travel 42. So you can put in the website for the place, the name of the place, the place type, whether it be airport, city, cruise ship, cruise, dining, event, hotel, et cetera, et cetera. Um, the address, the phone number, and then any information you want your clients to know based on that custom place that you're adding. So anytime there's something in Travel 42, or there's, there's something you want to add to the trip plan, but it's not in Travel 42, remember to add a custom place. Okay, now a couple more options that you have within this trip plan. 
So I can send it or print it as is. If I wanted just them to have the Rome, Italy information, their hotel and their see and do information, I still have my action items bubble up here at the top. I would simply click send and print. But you do have a couple more options. You can organize the information either by changing the order, dragging and dropping it to change the order of how it shows up when your clients see it, or I can schedule it. So you'll notice the calendar populates. I would simply scroll over to the date that they're going to be going, drag and drop it to that date. Do the same for each date they will be there. You can even break it down to the hour by going over here. And then let's get back to our day. There we go, June 13th. So if say they were going to a restaurant, Oh, remember they said Rome was late. So we'll go later in the evening. So there we go. Now I've gotten June 4th, or excuse me, June 13th scheduled. They'll be in Rome all day, but then they have a dinner reservation at 8.30 p.m. That, like I said, is totally optional, but it's a great way to build that itinerary for your clients so they know exactly where they're gonna be and when. Um, schedule change order. Now you can only do one or the other. So if you schedule it, then you can no longer change the order and vice versa. If you change the order, then you won't schedule it. Um, now the preview tab, this is simply a preview of everything that you have put together in this trip plan so you can see it before you send it out. So this is exactly what your clients are gonna be seeing. The cover page, your logo, your headshot, your contact information. Here's that trip summary that I told you about. And then you have your um, destination guide for Rome, Italy. That's the restaurant we scheduled for Tuesday, June 13th at 8.30 p.m. And then we have our hotel with the star review, the property, and the um, photo gallery. So from here, if you're absolutely done, you could simply click send, print, or copy URL. Copy URL allows this trip plan to be condensed into one URL, and you can either paste it in an email. Um, however you were going to get it to them, you would copy the URL and then paste it there. Um, but print download turns it to a PDF and send allows it to be sent in a web view form. So let's go and save and close this trip plan. And you'll notice here the travel dates have changed for this one. And the reason why is because I scheduled it on the calendar. So I put some items on the calendar, which then changes the travel date. So let me go ahead. I'm going to send this one real quick so I can show you something. We'll type in my client's name. Sorry, I have to have a couple of different emails in there for myself. Um, now, if you send it to your traveler, you have the option to send yourself a copy. Um, if you don't want a copy, you don't have to. Um, you just simply uncheck it. You can change the subject. Here is some information on Rome. Put in a body for the email and then just simply send the email. And while we're doing that, I'm going to go ahead and click on the profile while I'm waiting for that to come through. All right, there we go. So trip plan is here. You'll notice this is the trip plan I just received in my email. It looks identical to what we saw in the preview tab. So that preview tab is just simply a way for you to double check everything before you send it out. But what I wanted to show you is you'll notice this has changed as well, the last delivered, 2-7-2023 at 11.41 a.m. So you'll be able to see when you sent the trip plan and then also when the trip plan was last viewed. So I just viewed it. I don't know if it's, oh, 
there we go. Last viewed at February 7, 2023 at 11.41 a.m. That way you can see when your clients see it and when the last time they saw it was. So if you notice maybe one of your clients hasn't viewed it, maybe reach out to them via email, let them know you sent them something so they could be expecting it. Um, but that way you can kind of see exactly when they see the trip plans and when you sent it. Um, now, if I wanted to keep this, but I wanted to reuse this trip plan, like I, I want to keep this one for Larissa, but I want to reuse this trip plan for another client. Then I would go in and simply click duplicate. Copy of Rome populates. Then I would go in, click edit details, take out the traveler because it's no longer Larissa anymore. Rome. There we go. Now I've got a brand new trip plan, exactly like the one I just sent to Larissa, but now I can reuse this one for another client. Or if I wanted to use this one just as a, a, a trip plan guide, let's say, for any other future trip plans, I could always send this one to anybody. But that duplicate just allows you to create a copy of the trip plan and reuse it for another person. So what I wanted to show you next was up here at the profile. This is basically where um, your business card is. So you'll see your headshot, your logo, first name, last name, phone number, email address, website, anything that you wanna put in here for your clients to see, that's what's gonna show up on your business card on the trip plan. So this is how they'll get back a hold of you. Preferences, this one is very helpful just because everybody is different in the way that they search for things and the way that they want to send information. So I would check out the preferences, the client view. You can include business card for all trip plans. If you know you never want to include the business card, simply uncheck it and save. And that for all future trip plans will be the way to go. Um, report items. See, when we did the template, the full guide was what popped up initially. But if you find yourself liking the leisure or the business or the cruise better, you can have that as your default guide just by saving it there. I like the full guide because I like it to start big and then I'll, de I'll delete items that I don't need. Email, this is the subject. You'll notice when I sent the trip plan, the enjoy your trip populated each time. If you wanted to change that, all you have to do is delete and save. Same with the copy me. If you don't ever want to receive a copy, uncheck it and then save and it won't send you the copy. But you can change that when you're sending the trip plans. Search, I like to sort by star rating for my hotels. Um, you can also search am amenity rating, the rate, the city, the commission, the distance, but star rating is my preference, which means that it shows up with the highest stars first and then goes down to the lower stars from there. Um, I believe that is about it for this webinar. Now, please know I do these about two times a month. So anytime I've done a live webinar, I try to record them and put them under the help tab. So we will do another one towards the end of this month. But if you get stuck anytime between now and then, please check out the help tab, which does feature some on-demand training. Um, and now I'll give it some time for any questions. Um, I see one that has come through and I wanted to wait till the end on this one. If I spell the client email address incorrectly, um, is there a way to change that email address? Yes, of course. We would need to go back to the dashboard, scroll down to the travelers, find their last name or find all, or even search for it in here. But say you needed to update the email, I would go in and click on the person that I'm wanting to update and then edit. Then you can change the email address, add your additional info, add notes as needed. You can also see all the trip plans associated with that traveler. Um, so anything editing wise can be done under the dashboard towards the bottom where the travelers are. Um, and I'm also gonna keep it on profile in case anybody wants to take down my email. Feel free to reach out to us for any questions. I'd be happy to help you out. Um, but I'll wait just a little bit longer for any questions that might come through.